Okay, we're on the last brush stroke technique tutorial, and I'm going to teach you the first technique. It's called stippling. You're going to want a relatively dry brush for stippling. There's two different types I'm going to show you, stippling on wet and stippling on dry. For stippling on dry, you're going to take a brush, something like this, that has stiff bristles, and you just create... This is called stippling. If your brush is more dry, it will appear more, let's see, there's that. Now you can also do what's called stippling on wet. So you would wet the surface first, and then when you go to stipple, something different happens. And you would just have to gauge what you, might use this for. This would be maybe a good technique for creating a sky, sunset, galaxy. The stippling dry could be good for something like sand, texture. You can also do a stippling on wash, which would mean you already have a color down on your surface. So you would create a wash first. And then find some kind of color that will blend okay with that. This is with wet and I'll leave a little place down here for it to dry and then I can show you what that will look like on dry in a minute. Okay, the next technique I'm going to show you is called pointed petals. Josiah, can you please close the door? Thank you. So pointed petals, you're gonna use a brush like this. Okay, it's just a small round pointed brush. And to make pointed petals, you hold your brush upright like this. You start out with a little bit of pressure and then Press down and release the pressure. Okay, so that's a pointed petal. I'm gonna just do a series of them. Pointed petals are great for making flowers, making leaves. You can use this shape of a brush stroke for um, using wings on a dragonfly or different types of winged creatures. There's another type of petal that's very similar to this called rounded petals. And to make rounded petals, it's a very similar process, only instead of starting out with a little pressure, you start out with your full round pressure. So it creates a round tip to the petal and then you release the pressure to make a point. Another very popular type of petal for doing flowers. Take a little bit of practice, you gotta kind of hold it in place. This one's just called grass. If you can experiment with different kinds, there could be grass that comes in clusters like this, little clusters of grass. You could do little rows of grass. You can vary, kind of alternate where the grass meets. Doesn't all have to be perfect like in a line, it could be different. So make sure you practice little clusters of grass like this. You can do long grasses like these. Just as long as you try a variety of types of grasses. Now splatter, we can go back to that same brush that we used before for the stippling. A toothbrush also can work really well for this. 
And splatter works really well for both on a dry surface or a wet surface. Um, I'm gonna show you. Gotta have a lot of water in mixed in with your paint. And then you just fling it. My students seem to really love splatter technique. Now cross hatching, another you go back to the little tiny round brush you might use cross-hatching for types of shading. A series of lines going this way, and then a series of lines going this way. Kind of fun. Radiating spikes. I'm going to come back up here and do and show you the stippling on wash after the wash has dried. It will be just how that sounds, a drier effect. And there you go. More brush stroke techniques for you.